Great. Um, I'll share a little bit about myself. I have spent a long, long time with the TEDx community. My first TEDx event happened in 2009. This is when TEDx had just begun, so it's almost 11 years now uh, spending with the community. And uh, I come from a city called Jaipur, which is also in the northern west part of India. It's uh, usually called the, the city of palaces. And it's a very old city with I mean, a lot of castles and a lot of histories and legends that come from my city. It's very colorful. I grew up in a family where my parents were in a job. My mother was a teacher. And it was a very, very classic Indian household. Everything was disciplined. We had set goals. Everybody wanted to become doctors, engineers. But somewhere down the line, I discovered that I was quite fascinated by, by stories. I, I don't know how, how films are made how people communicate with each other. But it was very late in life that I discovered that this could be a very interesting profession. It could be a very interesting line of business to work and also grow myself because I was very fascinated by, by animated movies, by cartoons and how people used to tell stories and fiction, all of those things. I studied business then I went on to did my masters, uh, spent some time working with a few companies in India, but eventually um, picked up my dream as I work very closely with the TED team. I've been a global TEDx ambassador since 2012, which is uh, how Nikki and I, you know, we got to know each other so closely because he was doing some fantastic stuff in the community in Europe and in, even in US. And I've spent a long time working with a variety of speakers for TED Talks uh, India, which is a television series. So TED Talks India was the first ever television series done by TED anywhere in the world. And it was a big challenge for us to produce such an insightful, intelligent content for a Saturday night prime time show for people who understand Hindi. So the first time such large scale content was produced for more than 700 million potential viewers who would watch it in Hindi. And uh, we had very interesting mandate from Fox and Disney uh, who are producing the show that the talks cannot be for more than five minutes and it has to be really, really simple in Hindi that people would understand. And the audience was such a wide audience, people from really small towns to people in big cities, everybody who was aspiring to learn something new. And for me, it was a very, very good creative challenge to be a speaker coach for, for 10 talks in your, uh, all the season, all the episodes. And I, I think I'm I'm very fortunate that my line of work is such that I get to really, really understand how people think, what drives them, what motivates them, how do they, how do they communicate, how do they articulate their ideas, and uh, I, I basically pick up from everyone who I interact with, put it together, try to decode, find some patterns, find some nice ways that people can, you know, share with each other, uh, especially in the last few months, how things have changed. It's uh, not just anymore an important skill uh, to be able to communicate, put your ideas. It's sort of become critical. And especially, I, I, could, I was listening to all of you and you know, you're working in, uh, in the space of innovation when there's such a cross pollination of ideas, people from different backgrounds, they come together with the hope and possibility that something, something new will be born, right? Or things will be changed completely. All of which is so so strongly dependent on how correctly, appropriately, effectively, interestingly, you can put your ideas forward and you know how those ideas marry each other. And uh, so I've enjoyed my, my especially last few months, I can't complain, even though it's a tough time for everyone. But um, there's a lot of human behavior, you know, I, I got to learn how people are learning, how people interact even in online conversations. It's, uh, it's very interesting. And uh, Nikki, you are very kind to invite me. I'm grateful. I don't know much, you know, some such wonderful people in the in the group. I don't know how much can I contribute or share, but I'll be happy to share just you know a few stories and few observations. Um, you know, things that I've I've been very closely observing. I've been talking to a lot of large scale companies who I work with in communication training and observing what these people are also observing about their employees or their stakeholders. So, um, very happy to meet all of you. And Nikki, you tell me how would you like to take this? I think 
Jeff. Keep on talking, keep on sharing from your world and then we open up and we can make it as interactive as you like. So um, all of you play it as an open mic session whenever you'd like to, there's something as she just mentioned, you'd like to talk about, chime in and have this conversation together. I think this is a beautiful follow-up to the session that we had with Akash. So it all comes together really nicely. So I, you know, there's, I mean, there's, there are so many things I can share, but all this while I was thinking of one thing that, uh, you know, in terms of communication, there are a couple of things I have observed in the last 10, 11 years from the time I've been working with, with speakers, with organizations, companies, ad agencies, television shows, all of those things. A uh, couple of things, you know, people need to realize even when they start thinking what is good communication, what is effective communication, two things. I think across all platforms, across all ages, in the history, in today, and even in future, the, as long as the communication is authentic, right, it always lands. That's my observation. We have interacted with so many speakers, and God has given us this gift. We are smart enough, and our eyes are smart enough to see through and see what is original, what is absolutely raw, pure, versus what is being made up. Right? And so one, whenever we start working with speakers, this is the, the most interesting part of my work is my first interaction ever with a potential speaker who wants to you know, communicate. It could be someone who's giving his speech at his wedding or someone who's delivering his first address as a CEO or someone who's presenting to investors. The first thing that you know, I do is that, what would you like to be known for? You know, give me your introduction. And that is where Right? So the first conversation begins and this is a part where a lot of people struggle. Um, and you know, this the same thing happens also when we go to conferences, when we go to events and you know, people are busy exchanging cards and you know, this is what I do. And most often our introductions are, this is what I do, this is where my company and this is, you know, this very simple uh, template of introduction that we give. And you remember that introduction as long as the next person comes and introduces you and gives you your card, right? But the real introduction, the, the real connections happen when you are telling your life story, right? So when you probably step out for a smoke or you step out for a coffee or you meet someone in the washroom, right? You have those small little exchanges, those things happen. And I, I've observed that people do not feel comfortable telling things about their own life. But the truth is, the moment you share interesting things about your life is when people make genuine connections. So the, the thing that I want to speak about in the next 10, 15 minutes, and I want to keep the conversation really open, in fact, is I've developed a very simple introduction framework. And this is where any person who, who thinks that they have to go and address an audience where people are looking forward to get to know you for the first time, or you have something to share about your life, your work, it's a very simple framework, and if I may share the screen just for a few minutes, then I can take that. Is that can I share the screen here? Yeah, yeah, you can share the screen. The work. Yes, it's working. Is, is it visible? Yes. Yeah. All right. So this is what we want. This is what we you know, tell everyone when you're telling your story. So what, what happens when you give a good introduction? It's a, it's a very, very, very exciting and a very interesting uh, you know, pattern of thinking that happens in our mind. It's a, it's a very scientifically proven, tested uh, flow of things that happen in your mind subconsciously and you don't even realize it. So when you go to a conference, you go to an event or even in a virtual meeting, there are some people who you find interesting, right? Because the way they have spoken about themselves, you just like it. I mean, your brain just responds really nicely to it. So when you listen to a good introduction, if it creates curiosity in your mind, if it occupies some space in your mind, then the introduction has been done well. That's what my personal belief is. If you are curious to know more, right, then you will have the desire to get engaged and get connected to the person. So either you want to know something or you want to make a business, you want to make a relation, 
you want to ask something, you want to satisfy some need or something that you have in your mind. As long as it is not creating curiosity in the other person's mind, I think it's just one step short of being a good introduction. So, why a story is important in our introduction, and I'll come to that framework, and I'll also tell you what the framework does. I'll not take much time on it because I want to spend more time in interacting and you know getting people's opinions. So, any story that you listen to, right? Whether that's a story of a founder, or a story of a business, or fiction, or movie, or anything. That story is typically filled with a lot of emotions, expressions, values, principles, fears, ideas. Yeah? An introduction is usually not filled with that. An introduction is only filled with information. But when you're telling your own story, it's usually it's supposed to be filled with all of these things because these things then all that that's been happening in your life, Nikki, or maybe in Martin's life, or maybe in Marcus's life. All of those stories have defined who you are today. And the stories that you are living today will define what you become in future. Right? So stories play a very critical role when you're trying to introduce yourself or even your business or even your startup or even the last project that you are doing. When it comes in the form of a story, it always lands well. So this framework is, you know, think of yourself as a very, very complex personality. And so this is what you are right now. All of us, all of us, this is what we are. You know, we are full of experiences, good, bad, emotions, heartbreaks, success, achievement. We are a very complex and jumbled up person. There are a lot of things in our head. But we fail to put it across in front of another person. Right? That, that's where people, many people struggle. I'm not saying everyone, but many of us struggle to put that story across. So what this framework does is that that complex person first needs to get disentangled and this is what you need to become. When you put all of those things smartly, when you put all of those things together is when you tell your story really, really nicely. And, and you know, people are, people listen to you. They, they love what you're doing. They would want to connect more. They have the desire to, you know, tell you that let's catch up, let's speak. I have something interesting, would love to know. All of those things happen as an outcome of a great story in an introduction. So, my principle behind sharing this framework is, is just one thing. We don't ask, the reason why many of our introductions are not so effective is because we don't ask ourselves the right question before writing our own introduction. So all that I'm telling is that when you next think of an opportunity, even, when, even if it could be as simple as going on a date or meeting a potential investor, or maybe hiring someone new, or maybe applying for a job. All you need to do is, do not think of your introduction as a piece of information, but think of your introduction as a story that needs to be told. And how do you build that story? When you ask yourself some difficult, uncomfortable questions, things that you have not ever spoken or written about. That's all like at the back of your mind, but has never surfaced. So, and this is what I think is, you know, when you talk about this framework, and I just share a few questions, and after this session, I will in fact share a workbook also that maybe you can share with the entire group. Uh, you know, it, it's got a list of questions. It's, it's got a nice flow of what you need to think about your past, present, future. What are your values? And when you do this exercise, you know, and you can do this uh, with your spouse, with your best friend, with your co-founder, with your girlfriend. And, you know, take your time, be most comfortable, be most honest, and you will see some really amazing things emerging, which could become a part of your personal story, right? So a great introduction will, if I'm telling you a good introduction in my, in my, my good story, you will have some emotions, opinions, and some imagination going on. So if, if Nikki tells me that I grew up in a place where my parents used to take me for hunting, every summer and that's when I learned the, the value and importance of being surrounded with nature, with animals. So the moment when you're saying this, subconsciously I'm building up an imagination in my head that you know this is how Nikki must be when he was young, you know, probably going for hunting and doing things and coming back and I don't know doing a barbecue. All of these good introduction helps me imagine who you are. 
but a piece of information doesn't help me imagine who you are. That's the difference I'm trying to make. So I put, you know, I'm just putting a few questions, not the whole thing that I will share post the session at workbook. Uh, you know, take your time and you'll see the story emerging out. But some important questions, right? So when you and when you talk about your past, when when we do this thing, right? Write down all of these things. Uh, take the effort of actually opening a document, answering some of these questions, or probably just having a voice recorder, or just sitting with your best friend, the person you trust the most, actually speaking out and giving answers to these things. Right? What were you doing before? What skills do you have? What were the most important milestones? Right? What did you learn out of those milestones? Did you face any extraordinary challenges? And the last question is a very, very important one. What were some of your failures? Now, the question people ask me is, why should we talk about failures in our introduction? That would not be great. We don't want to talk about things that we could not achieve or we failed miserably. My answer to that is, as, a, as just a bump or just a speed breaker in an otherwise long journey, that's fine. The important thing that people need to know is how that failure changed you and what did you become because of that failure. That's what people are interested in and that's what people like to listen to. Not so much about this project failed and we lost the money, we lost the clients, the company sank. Right? People would be interested to know what happened because of that failure. And in a hero's journey also, it doesn't matter what's the failure. The important part is, can you in your story say that these things happen and I learned this and that's when we, you know, we could do something else two years later, three years later. This is what we became. So some of these things about your past should definitely be a part of your story when you're giving an introduction. Just one clarification. When I say that you're giving an introduction, it doesn't mean that you are just giving a two-minute introduction. I'm assuming that you have a chance to speak to someone. Obviously, you can't talk about your past, present, future in two minutes. It's, it's of course, difficult. But assuming you have a chance to have some conversation of five, ten minutes or fifteen minutes, to present to someone or talk to someone. These are things that should definitely become a part of your introduction. The second is present, right? So obviously you can talk about your work, uh, how are you helping people, what, whatever you are doing, what, how does that impact anyone? My personal favorite is whatever work you are doing, can you help me understand in really, really simple words, how does that change my life? And this is a question most often we don't have an answer to. So if somebody is doing something in technology or in business or in the social space, can we in our introduction put it in a way that the other person is able to understand that this is how your work could impact me or you know thousands of millions of other people. That's what people get interested with. Uh, what is it that you are trying to solve? What is that one thing that keeps you awake at night? Like, I'm sure all of us have a dozens of things to, to think about before we go to sleep. Right? Things that we want to achieve, things that we want to do, we want to accomplish. Is there anything interesting that you could bring in your introduction that people would get curious about? Right? And I share you know, a whole list of questions and you start answering them and you will see things coming out. The most interesting part for me is to talk about future. And, you know, I have a couple of questions here. Uh, and one of my favorite questions is, and in fact, this is where I would like all of you to jump in. And my question is very simple. What would you like to be known for? Can somebody answer that? Uh, I mean, I mean, not answer, but just share, like, you know, you made somebody really interesting, really, really interesting, maybe in a flight or in a cafe or in a lounge. And just someone asks you, what would you like to be known for? Nikki, why don't you share? What would you like to be known for? I would like to be known for the guy who changes the life of 10 people every week. That's such a nice thing to say in your introduction. Anyone else who wants to share? 
Simon. Um, I would like to be known for for as the guy, as the social entrepreneur who, by building things, changed the lives of of hundreds of thousands. And that's interesting. But Simon, tell me honestly, do you share this in your introduction to people? No, I haven't. But wouldn't it be so lovely if you shared this? Without being arrogant, but is genuinely this is what you would like to be known for, right? I I could start sharing it, and would also make sense, and probably wouldn't sound. Yeah. You could. I mean, you could very honestly, with all humility, but you know, still very impactfully share this. Um, I would ask you. Know, I, I don't know, Marcus or Johan, Florian, any one of you would share. Well, oh, it's really interesting because I'm now in deep thinking mode about actually what to share. Uh, I guess I want to be I want to be known as a really nice, inquisitive guy who's tended to break through the barriers which other people have set before him and set before themselves. That's very profound. It's very well put. I think what we don't want to be known for. And I'm addressing everyone in that room. We don't want to be known for the people, for the guys who knew it, but we didn't do it, or who knew it, but we didn't see it, or who knew it, but we didn't position ourselves like this. Yeah. Florian? I, I, I totally agree with Marcus. It also got me thinking, and I believe down to the core, I would be known for, I would like to be known for the guy who can help thousands of people to overcome all the fears, their doubts, their worries, to perform at the best and to live the life they really want to live, like to look back and say, I lived up to my full potential and don't regret not having done anything in the past. So basically I want to be known as the guy who helps the people to free themselves from any constraint and to perform on the highest level to reach their goals. Excellent, excellent. Johan? Yes, I, I want to be known for like the guy who simplified dramatically the patenting process so that not just big corporations can patent at very high cost, but any simple inventor, you know, from a poor neighborhood, I don't know, in Bangladesh can have access to this uh, uh, tool, you know, to, to, to be able to grow and um, protect his intellectual property. Right. And you know, I hope all of you will notice one thing when all of you are sharing that you would like to be known as a guy. All of you are, are sharing things that you want to do for others. Right? I have done this exercise dozens of times and nobody will ever say that I would like to be known as a guy who made $10 million. I would like to be known as a guy who got the first um, Rolex or, or Mercedes. All of you are coming across as people who have the ability, the intelligence, uh, the mindset to do things for others. Right? And when I as a viewer, or I as a listener, listen to all of you, it puts such a nice and appropriate impression about you in my mind that you know, here is a guy who's doing his work in his company or in his business, he's doing interesting things. But look at him, he also wants to do so many good things. And he has, right? And in fact, I want to go to the next question. And again, anyone can, you know, fill this can one I, up for me. Can I chime in here, mute Ajit, for a second, because what you're saying, this framework makes me thinking. And I'm posing this as an open question to everyone in the room. Wouldn't it be actually beautiful also to say, I would like to be known as the guy who learned to love himself and not to take care of himself. Yeah. It's Why interesting, not? right? It's interesting how we're <laughs> focused on um, putting other people's attention first, but the more I have a very strong year of learning myself better from a different angle and perspective. And the more I dive into this, the more I learn that I have to take care of myself first. Mm -hmm. 
which is something that's very counterintuitive to all the motivation talks that you hear um, all around, right? Custom um, you can solve. I think you will be able to take care of everyone who's in your life. So obviously that does make a lot of sense. In fact, you know, having said that, my, my next question, and anyone can, I probably I could go to Akash and I could request Martin. If you could, you know, help me um, complete this sentence, then just give me a few more years and I will be able to. Again, these are all questions. These are all very simple questions. But we just don't sit down and ask these questions to ourselves. And the moment you do that, amazing answers come out. And that, that those those things become a part of your introduction. Akash, what do you think? Definitely. So uh, I'd like to complete that as uh, just give me a few more years and I will be able to improve the state of edtech over here in India. Wonderful. What do you think, Martin? Marcus is um, making. Martin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I can try the sentence. Uh, just give me a few more years, and we will be able to develop Carinthia to a good innovation ecosystem. That's interesting. Anyone else? I feel like just give me a few more years and I'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what do you think? Johan, are you there? Sorry, yes. Uh, just give me a few more years and I will design a framework where every simple citizen will um, be able to, to uh, let's say, um, innovate and protect their innovation. Right. Interesting. Niall, if I'm yeah. pronouncing your name correct. Yeah, Niall, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, Niall. <laughs> but I have a what thousand pronunciations, so it's fine. Anything's good. <laughs> um, right. I'd say just give me a few more years um, and I'll be able to help a thousand leaders, people believe that they can innovate. Very nice. Right. I think all of these are very, very nice ways to you know, put across your thinking. Because it, when you tell about your future or things that you want to do in the future, it helps people imagine. And when that, that thing happens, they have curiosity. Right? So, all of those things that you mentioned are most likely to get you a follow-up question. Are you sure? How do you want to do it? What's your plan? Will you be able to do this? Isn't it impossible? Or isn't someone already doing? So all of these things are now drawing me into a conversation which a piece of information cannot do, but a story can do. Right? And then can you tell me a story? Then why do you think like this? Right? Uh, the reason for this framework is, the reason to create a framework like this is that it's just a set of difficult, simple questions, but with difficult answers. And I would say that, you know, every six months, it's like a journey inside yourself, right? So you contemplate it, you think, and then you write down these answers and you read them, share with someone who's very close to you. And you will see that the way you are putting your story in front of others changes dramatically. Right. I want to go to the last section and then, you know, let's have a great conversation after that. People make opinions about you when they get to know your values, which doesn't happen in a normal introduction. Right. So when I say that, you know, I got some really good vibes from a person, I say that because there is a similarity, there is a subconscious level similarity in the way I think or do certain things and I assume you will also do. Right? So if you like whiskey and I also like whiskey, probably, you know, I got good vibes from you. If you like country music and I also like country music and we 
happen to talk about those things. We have similar vibe. We have similar interests. And values are basically things that drive your behavior. So if you are, if you have a value that you know, I will never cheat, or if you have a value that you know, I will never make extra profit, or you know, I will never cheat people. Anything could be anything really, or I will only hire people who are loyal. Versus, I will only hire people who are intelligent, more intelligent than me. A value could be anything. It's just, a, it's basically a principle. It's a code that you will never break in life. Right? I have a few codes. Like, for example, one of my values and principles is that I feel very unsettled if I don't know how something works. So curiosity, you know, as a principle, is, is a big value for me. So conversations or you know my experiences, all of those are driven. If something is too simple. If it is too already decoded, I, I lose my interest. It's just a bunch, it's just a value, it's just a way of thinking. But you know, I've again put some questions and you know, please feel free to jump in. And if you want to answer any of those things, these are these are ways to also express how you work. And these are ways to indirectly, subtly put across how you function, how you operate. Like for example, uh, I can let go of work, but I will never compromise on. Anyone can answer. Or any other question, in fact, as a matter of fact. Marcus, you want to think of anything? I do work for free if I think I can help change people's lives. And when I take any risk, I only think of what the outcome can be as a positive. Um, I, I hire people I like and and actually I respect. And I respect because they bring something different to the table. They challenge me. They make me think twice. And what I dislike about someone is when they just say yes. Hey. So Marcus, when you were saying those things, I want to know what, what was everybody else thinking about Marcus? What Were you making some subconscious level impressions about him when he said that I, you know, I, I work for free, I can help people, I won't charge, I hire people who like and you know, bring something to the table. I could, in my mind, draw a certain visual of how Marcus could be as a boss or how Marcus could be as a client. But otherwise, I would never get to know. If, if Marcus only tells me that I do this, 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 and I do this, this. Right? So, the, the more I get to know about your values, the more uh, clear of my attraction or my repulsion becomes. Like, you know, that, that connection happens when I get to know your values. Anybody else wants to share? Nikki? I will um, work if I want to work for you, but you cannot afford me. Why do you like someone's work? Why, why do you dislike someone's work? Oh, you're on mute. Uh, I think if it's inspiring and I get the impression uh, he or she uh, helps really. If, if the work is inspiring. Yes, and, and he or she helps people really. That's great. So it could be great to, you know, let's say you're working in an organization or a company and you just want to say one thing about the company or the people that you're surrounded with. And you could say that the reason I work around these people is because all of them are very inspiring and they're doing great work. And I get to know a little bit more about you and, you know, the kind of people you like to surround yourself with. I will go to any extended work if I feel anyone Simon? Can you repeat, please? The first question, I will go to any extent at work if I feel. I, I, hmm. I'm very good in motivating myself and, and, and giving myself tasks 
So most. What, what, gone away? I think we lost Simon. Simon, could you, could you say the last sentence? No, I, I think that my, I have such a personality where I do it anyways, that it doesn't depend so much on, on, on the surrounding. Florian, Nile, when I take risk on why do you hire or fire people? Why do you, anything you want to share? Hmm. Why do I hire or fire people? I, I, I do love to be surrounded by inspiring people. So hire people if I trust them, if they inspire me, if they're good in what they're doing that I can't do, and why do I fire someone? Because I don't trust the person and because the person has, how to say, yeah, like he has damaged the trust. I think trust is a very, very big value for me. share this in your introduction that you know how trust is so important for you to do well achieve well be with good people it, it also sets the right expectation for the people who you are surrounded with so i know if i'm if i'm working for florian or if i'm reporting to florian trust is a big big thing for me so yeah so these are just the four things um, you know, and I share this framework. I will share all the sets of questions and how do you, and you know, maybe at the end of the, by, after you have done this whole exercise, maybe you could just record a five minute video of yourself. You don't have to publish, you don't have to share, but you know, just put yourself in this little uncomfortable situation that put your camera on, think of all of these questions, think of all of these things and just, you know, just record. Just put yourself out there and share these things and that, that becomes like a good introduction so that and once you have said it, once you have done it, your mind gets conditioned. Right? I would stop the screen share here because I want to make you know the most of the time uh, interacting with all of you. But the, the only point is that you know um, our brains are hardwired to stories. You know, you will never remember the last presentation that you saw but you are most likely going to remember the last story that you heard. <laughs> right? So stories play a big role and uh, your personal story should definitely be out because it's unique, it's beautiful, you are living it. Uh, there's nothing more valuable in your life than your own personal story. Let the world know about it. Hey, Ajit, sometimes you do remember the last presentation. But you tend, yes. to, you tend to remember, I never, ever, ever want to see this sort of presentation again. <laughs> yes, I hope this wasn't one of those. Uh, I have to share. Of course a not. <laughs> Allow me to share a little story with you. I was just in Berlin invited to give the keynote at the Internet Marketing Congress. And before me was a motivation speaker from Iran and he shared a story about his family. Next day, he gave a workshop on storytelling and he asked the audience who remembered my story and everyone raised their hands. And then he asked who remembered the first slide of the speaker after me and no one raised their hands, but I was in a room and then he saw me because I was the speaker after him and he went like, see Nikki, no one remembers your talk. <laughs> and it was like, uh, um, okay. <laughs> But you're right. It's kind of the thing. It was just funny because I was in a room and I'm sure he didn't expect that. That's, uh, that's some story in itself. I but, love yeah. that framework. Will you share it with us? Can I distribute yeah, it? I, I will share the whole framework and the workbook. Um, you know, feel free to share, spend some time, get a drink, start writing. <laughs> And, and reconnect with Ajit, I'll all connect you, put record your video and share it with us. I think it's beautiful to see this work in progress of personal development. I'm sure if you share it with the 10 people in the room, at least one will find time to look at it and give you some feedback upon it. And isn't that beautiful? 
Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think all of us are guilty of you know at least once in our life, um, you know, guilty of giving a really really bad introduction, and we come out and we know that we could have done better. And it's not just always a business presentation; it could be just simply telling about yourself to someone important. So, you know, suggest that it doesn't happen again. Uh, it's you know, it's good to prepare some thoughts before getting into that situation. The question here, Ajit, in your experience, is how long should that introduction be? So I would prepare myself for something between three to five minutes. <gasps> yeah, and how I can do that is I am assuming that if I am introducing someone, my goal is not just make it a monologue, but can I, in the first one or two minutes, draw that person into a conversation? Even if it lasts only for three, four minutes, but can I draw that person into a conversation? So if I'm addressing an audience, then definitely I can take the liberty of speaking for three to four minutes. Yes. Three minutes also I can, which is about five hundred words, about four, four hundred to five hundred words. You can fit in a lot of amazing stuff about your life, uh, and if it's slightly longer, then definitely more. But I think aim for something between three minutes to maximum five minutes. And I mean, that's a, that, it. Seems like quite a long time, actually, five minutes for an introduction. I suppose in a in a TED talk, then it's perhaps different. But if you're in a a regular networking meeting, you know, usually you have maybe less than that. So I, I guess yeah. it can still can it can still work. I mean, the framework I presume still works if hmm. if you can condense your story down as long as you have the key points. Is that right? Or absolutely. So if it is a then even if if it's just a one minute. I don't know elevator pitch. I can of course, you know, do away with a lot of personal stuff that the person is not interested in, of course. But for me, the purpose of an elevator pitch, and this is what I believe in, and I've learned from people that even if I'm telling a personal story or if I'm telling about my business or anything, the purpose of an elevator pitch or an introduction should never be to tell you about who I am. The purpose of a great introduction should be. Purpose of a great elevator pitch should be to buy more time. Can I get you excited in one or two minutes so that you give me more time? Ten minutes coffee, thirty minutes just one drink, two hours. Let's get dinner. So if I can get the other person curious and excited, the problem is our first reaction towards giving introduction is everything that I do, I will tell you. You know, everything that about my work, my company, I will just tell you. All I'm saying is just flip it and get the other person curious, and can I then get more time? So I could say that you know I do my communication. I'm a trainer, and I I work with companies and organizations in storytelling. And you know the last six months, you will not believe how companies have started looking and training their employees, how skills are changing. But you know I would love to sit with you and tell you how three things that will change the way we work in the next three years. Great conversation, a lot of things. Uh, but very fascinating, you know. Why don't we find some time and speak again on this? Yeah, that's that's so, great. That's really helpful. Yeah. I'd like to add something here, if that's okay for you, Ashit. I think you should never yeah. have one introduction, but you should have four. Yeah. I don't know if you the profiling, right? There, are people feel physical pain if you talk too much, so you have to come to the point. And then there are people who want to know more about you, your hobbies and what your lifestyle and the things that you're passionate about, because otherwise they think you only want their money. And then there are people who want to understand processes and where you are coming from and how your strategic mindset is built, because otherwise they think a good answer is just a good luck result. And then there are people who can't listen, but they always have to talk. So how would you address someone who's having a hard time listening? And now you see it's four very different ways of approaching. And if you only have one, you have a 75% chance of hitting the wrong nerve or just a 25% chance of addressing someone in a way he wants or she wants to be addressed. So it's all these formats are great. And I think you shouldn't pick one of them, but many to have different ways of introducing yourself at hands because you will instantly see from how the person talks to you, how the person what the person wears, how, how much 
the person is talking about themselves, you will instantly understand where that person is coming to you, where this person is coming from. And if you address someone with your life story who feels physical pain that you talk too much, he just wants to get out of the conversation no matter what you're talking about. So um, I love these frameworks also because I think they give you this variety that you need to have several approaches of who you are and where you're coming from because they might really enjoy your career story, right? And others hate it because they feel like you're bragging so if you never tell it, it still might be wrong. And if you always tell it, it's probably also wrong. So it's good to have different ways of saying, this is me and this is where I'm coming from. And it should always end like I've said before, that people would say like, very interesting, tell me more. I want to have this conversation. I want to get more of you. By time, I think that was just on, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah so. I think the only thing I would like to leave all of you with is that, you know, whatever work you're doing right now, uh, in whichever capacity or position, I'm sure there is one person who, would, who could help you the most, right? Maybe money, maybe connections. You know, imagine yourself getting into an elevator and let's say you meet that one person. It could be the president, the prime minister, or the richest man of your country, whoever it could be. And you just get a minute, right? And you have to introduce and tell about yourself. All I'm saying is that, you know, go back and don't think um, what would you tell about yourself. Think about it in such a way that the person ends up saying, I want to meet you again. How would you do that? Different answers, everyone has a different approach, but at least put yourself in that difficult situation. Amazing. Ajit, I love this session so much. Thank you so much for your wisdom and for your approach and for the tools that you geared us up with. The, the most favorite sessions are those where you can instantly weave in the content into the fabric of your life and it's not theory and the ivory tower and far out. It's right now. And I felt like that's the least common denominator of today, of the two sessions. Akash is still with us. It's a, it's a right now day. And you should go home from today's session with your own right now agenda and big elements from these two meetings. I think there are so many available. And if you just pick one or two, today has changed your life. And that's what the whole thing is about. Ajit, thank you so much. Akash, again, thank you so much for opening today. You guys were, were just amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. Have a wonderful rest of you're your day. You're doing a phenomenal job. You're doing fantastic by bringing such, um, such a variety of interesting people from so many backgrounds. Akash, thank you for staying longer and being a part of this conversation. And um, I, like it. I would love to connect with all of you, you know, personally over email, over LinkedIn. And I'm sure you I will connect you guys with the recording of the station and also connect you with Akash. Thank so you so much. much. Thank you for your time. Namaste. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Really excellent. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Could we have a group picture, Nikki? Oh yeah, of course we have. We can actually do a group picture like this. So let me well, let me remove the spotlight. You know, let's all. Oh. <laughs> And then I have a screenshot. I don't know, Indra, can you maybe just for a second turn on video so we have a screenshot of everyone? Maybe Indra, I'm not sure if she's still listening or just online, but maybe she can just turn off, turn on the video. Indra, are you there? Because it would be and nice. And, muted. and we have, yeah, you're muted, but I know she's at work, but maybe she can turn on the video for a second so we have everyone and not a tile. Let's give her a few more seconds to turn on video. Let's do it, Indra. Thank you. That's great. I can see Indra is trying to come here. That's perfect. Uh, now we have everyone. Beautiful. I'll share that with you. All the very best. Have a good you soon. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Bye. Bye. Bye.